Hello and welcome to another Mr. Carter Science Special. In this video, we'll be looking at cells. In particular, we'll be looking at stem cells, differentiation and growth of cells. As always, keep your eye on the learning outcomes so you can follow along and see how your learning is progressing. So on the screen in front of you is a list of various specialised cells found in both plant and animals. We have, for example, the palisade mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll, both found in plant leaves, which carry out photosynthesis. We've got the root hair cell here, which has a function of absorbing water and minerals from the soil. And the xylem cell, which will transport that water and minerals up towards the leaves for use in photosynthesis. And we also have the phloem cell, which will transport the products of photosynthesis, um, sugars like sucrose, both up to flowers for use in nectar and all the way down to the root cells so it can be utilised in respiration. We also have a number of different specialised cells for animals. We've got the ciliated epithelial cells, which are found in the trachea and the bronchioles, which have the hair like cilia to waft and remove mucus from the lungs. And um, the mucus will, of course, have trapped any dirt and bacteria, so that gets removed as well. We've got the skin cells, which acts as a waterproof barrier and also as a barrier to any pathogens or microbes that might need to get into the body. Nerve cells transmit electrical nerve impulses from the central nervous systems to the muscles um, to help stimulate and control movement. Red blood cells carry oxygen around the body so that it can get the oxygen can be utilised in respiration by the body's cells. Sperm cells and egg cells are utilised in reproduction and muscle cells will contract and relax and control movement. But how is it that an organism can be made out of all of these different specialised cells? Each of these specialised cells has got the same basic features. They'll have a cell membrane, a cytoplasm, and within that, a nucleus. And the nucleus will contain DNA. And the DNA is a set of instructions of how the cell can carry out its functions. In fact, the DNA is really a set of instructions for how to make proteins. And the different proteins made can, can, uh, will control the different functions of these cells. But how is it when every single cell in a multicellular organism has exactly the same DNA and therefore exactly the same genes, how is it we can have such a variety of specialised cells made? Well, to answer that question, we have to think about how a multicellular organism is created. And the first process of that creates this life is known as fertilisation. And fertilization occurs when the nucleus of a sperm cell fuses with the nucleus of an egg cell. All multicellular organisms begin life as a fer single fertilized cell called a zygote. This zygote will then divide by mitosis to form a small ball of cells called an embryo. All the cells in the embryo are clones of each other. They've all got exactly the same DNA and genes. So how is it that these identical embryonic cells become specialized cells? Well, before we can answer that question, we have to think a little bit more about the cells in the embryo. So here is our zygote divided by mitosis to form two cells and then four cells, eight cells, 16 cells, 32 cells, and eventually a ball of cells known as the embryo, each identical, each a clone. And the cells in this embryo are known as stem cells because they are unspecialized, but they have the ability to develop into any specialized cell. There's around 216 different specialized cells in the human body that an embryonic stem cell could develop into. So how? How would these embryonic stem cells develop into these specialised cells? Well, that process is known as differentiation. Differentiation is the process of an unspecialised cell becoming specialised. And this will happen when different genes are switched on in different cells. 
and this will mean that different proteins are made and the different proteins control different chemical reactions so the cell begins to have different adaptations and different functions and so these specialized cells will continue to divide by mitosis and therefore increase in number and in size and this is known as growth and this is how an organism will grow in animals there are two types of stem cells that we need to consider there's the embryonic stem cells that we've just discussed and they can differentiate and form any one of the 216 different specialized cells that we have and these specialized cells will then form the tissues and organs however there is also a different type of stem cell known as an adult stem cell which are found in fully grown organisms they're found in the organs of these organisms of these animals and they can produce a more limited range of specialized cells needed for the organs to grow and repair its tissues for example here we have a bone and the yellowish tissue in the very center of the bone is known as bone marrow and bone marrow contains adult stem cells that can differentiate and form a limited range of cells you can see here that they'll form platelets and red blood cells and a small number of different white blood cells the lymphocytes and the phagocytes are all produced by the adult stem cells found in the bone marrow this of course is a much smaller number of cells compared to um, an embryonic stem cell plants also have stem cells often the stem cells in a plant are known as merry stem cells because they're found in areas of the roots and shoots known as the merry stem here for example you can see a root a diagram of a root you can see the root cap at the base which will push the root through the soil move the soil out of the way and we can see just behind there we have a region called the zone of cell division or the meristem and this contains adult stem cells and they can specialize throughout the life of the plant and uh, allow mitosis to take place continually in the meristem forming the specialized cells needed to form the shoots and the roots of the plants specialized plant cells can also undifferentiate and become a different type of specialized cell for example cells in the stem can become root cells when a cutting is taken and that would be when you would slice the stem and perhaps encourage the formation of specialized cells by the use of uh, plant hormones such as auxin this property of plant cells that they can undifferentiate and re-specialize means that it's very easy to produce clones from plant tissue two methods by which we can do this are known as cuttings and tissue culture plant cells can produce clones by undifferentiating and reproducing by mitosis and a clone is an individual which has exactly the same dna as the parent and cloning is in plants is relatively easy cloning in animals is very difficult so plants can actually create clones naturally both by producing little runners and plantlets and the plantlet would become a would be a clone of the original parent plant for example strawberries can do this potato plants can be cloned naturally by producing tubers underground and if the um, the tuber gets broken the stems that's holding the tuber together with the adult plant gets broken that tuber or we know it as a potato can actually grow into a new plant but the new plant would have exactly the same dna as the original parent plant it's a clone more recently in science we've looked at a couple of different ways of creating artificially clones of plants cuttings for example as we've already discussed where a gardener may take a, a section of a stem with some leaves and encourage rooting by use of plant hormones such as auxin 
is uh, a technique that's been around for thousands of years and produces clones but also more recently we've got plant tissue culture where we use uh, a medium such as agar jelly that you can see down here and we encourage plant tissue to grow into uh, small plantlets which can then be removed placed in soil and the cells will specialize and differentiate into the various different tissues needed to grow an adult plant stem tissues leaf tissues root tissues etc so it's very very interesting to see that the processes of differentiation uh, uh, can be utilized to form these specialized cells from unspecialized stem cells, both adult stem cells and the embryonic stem cells. I hope you've enjoyed this video on growth differentiation and stem cells. If you have, please like and subscribe to the channel so that you will get the first notifications when I produce more uh, videos to help you with your GCSE biology studies. Thank you very much for your time. Don't forget to comment below and let me know what you've learned from this video.